The Markowitz portfolio model leads naturally into capital market theory. Capital market theory uses the portfolio model along with debt markets, capital markets or financial markets, to arrive at a single portfolio that all investors would want to hold. This material is covered in Chapter 9 of our book, beginning on page 168. The capital market theory model is based on some assumptions, some fairly restrictive assumptions, but uh, useful assumptions nonetheless. Here are those related to the investor behavior. They're risk averse. They have an investment horizon of a single period. We're not, not looking here particularly at a long multi-period horizon. And, and here's the, uh, the, the, uh, major assumption here is that investors have homogeneous expectations. Everybody has the same expectations regarding asset returns, their variances, and their correlations. I, in other words, no one disagrees about what the expected return distributions look like. Assumptions about the capital markets used in the capital market theory are that their capital markets are perfectly competitive. Um, no one can influence the uh, the capital markets. The capital markets are don't have any frictions in it, which frictions would include transaction cost, um, bundling of assets, or, or size limits on what you can purchase and sell. Like for example, if you bought, purchase a uh, stock on most in most cases you have to purchase a hundred shares or face considerable transaction costs. The final assumption about the capital markets is that the investor can borrow and lend at the same rate. And obviously most people borrow at a different rate than they, than they, than they lend. And that the difference there represents risk premium. Results of the capital market theory are that all individuals will hold the same risky portfolio. This portfolio is, uh, is, is the point where the capital market line is tangent to the Markowitz efficient frontier. This property that all individuals will hold the same portfolio is the two fund separation theorem. So individuals will hold the same securities and then they'll make up for differences or desires and expected returns and risk in the capital market or the financial market by using the risk-free asset. This is a graphical representation of the capital market theory and it comes from page 169 of the textbook. What you see here is first the Markowitz efficient frontier and that Markowitz efficient frontier is developed as we shown in the previous modules. To that we add a capital market or a financial market that has a risk-free rate in it. At that risk-free rate, we can borrow, both borrow and lend at that risk-free rate. There's no frictions in that market, and given that we can borrow and lend at that rate, we can combine the, the, the financial asset, this risk-free financial asset, with borrowing and lending, and expand upwards our risk-efficient set, and we will have a, uh, a, a, a tangency with a market efficient portfolio at point M. At this point, this is M, where all individuals will hold that market portfolio, M. If they want to hold or have less risk, rather than holding on the efficient set, they will hold portions of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio or M, and that will occur on the red portions of the capital market line. And here, the individual will be uh, lending money at the risk-free rate to other individuals and also holding the market portfolio. If the, mark, if the individual wanted no risk, they would hold or lend all their money, and how, uh, their proportion in the market portfolio would be zero, and um, the risk-free rate would be one. Other individuals may want more risk and a higher return and they would hold lines on the hold portions of the line on the blue and there those individuals would be holding them holding more of the market portfolio than was in the asset and they would be borrowing. 
and that borrowing would be put back into the market portfolio M. So some individuals would be lending, some individuals would be borrowing. Those on the blue section of the line would be borrowing. Those on the red section of the line would be lending. One of the results of the capital market theory, and the most important result, is that there's a market portfolio that all individuals will hold. And again, all individuals will hold this, this, this single portfolio, and this is a, the market portfolio. And as we see when we get into a capital asset pricing model, all assets are hold, held in the proportion to their market weights. And this is what's used to develop the beta in the capital asset pricing model, or this is the theory that's used in developing that beta. 